Grab your favorite flavor, Potpourri Wargamers, because today we are doing painting alone together with a bit of a potpourri in our projects. I've been a busy little guy over the last few days. I got some foam. The cars inside this little number are for gas lands, as you can see. I got the rule book, so we are getting closer to throwing that down on the table. This is just for illustration purposes. As you can see, this is a six millimeter cops for my riot game. And I have this out because I wanted to show you the other thing that I did. One of the great things about being a war gamer is, particularly these fine scales, you always get way more than you need. Uh, the bases for my riot game are these little one inch rounded corner pieces of, of wood that you get for about 20 cents a piece. A uh, big bag of 200 of them costs you about 10 bucks. So they're pretty cheap. And I'm going to be using this for my Napoleonics game. Well, not Napoleonics. It's actually for the Trojan Empire campaign. I think I'm going to be able to squeeze a lot of 2 millimeter figures on there. I mean, look at, look at these giant 6 millimeter figures, right? Now, the rule set that I'm going to be using is called 2x2 two two Napoleonics. And in 2x2 two two Napoleonics, you fit a regiment onto, well... The rules call for a 1 inch by 2 inch. I haven't decided whether I'm going to go ahead and use 2 bases per regiment or if I'm just going to say, you know what, the heck with it. That's my regiment. And be done with it. Either way, one of the things to be aware of is in that rule set you only have 2, and I don't have the figures yet, but that's no excuse for getting started on the project. In that rule set you only have 2 statuses. Well, you have 4 technically. Everything's fine and you're completely dead. So if everything's fine, you don't need a marker. And if you're dead, you don't need a marker because you're not on the, on the table anymore. But if you have fired your weapons, you are pinned. And you need to have somebody come along and whip you into shape so you can move. If you are badly injured, then you get disrupted and you put your, your smoke like that. I went back and forth on how to do smoke. Uh, traditionally, you, people use cotton balls. They work okay, but they're very light. They tend to blow away. I've seen guys use little lengths of balsa wood painted white. You put it in front. It's uh, easy. It doesn't blow away. It's fairly rugged. I wanted something a little more fuzzy, and I think when you see this with the 2 millimeter figures, which are going to be, of course, about a third the size of these 6 millimeter figures, I think this is going to work just fine, uh, particularly with the Disrupted, where you've got a little smoke coming up, and it's got that little bit of wire in there, so yeah, if you blow real hard, it's going to go bye-bye, but uh, I think that'll be a useful compromise, and a big bag like this was only a dollary do, and in point of fact, I only needed four of those sticks, and that gets me more than I'll ever need. Still, one less item on my to-do list checked off. I also upgraded my painting. Uh, I don't know who it is. One of the war game YouTubers introduced me to this concept of BBs. He was painting something. It might have been Rob over at Rob's Tabletop World. I wish I re could remember who suggested it, but what he did, he broke up in a new pot of paint. Of course, this isn't new, which makes the tip all the better, and he dropped a little BB in there. So that all his paints are rattle paints and I thought what a great idea at work I was able to salvage a whole bunch of these stainless steel ball bearings they're twice the size of a Red Rider Daisy double action BB gun BB but that's all right because now when it comes time to mix my paints I got a little agitator in there so that feels good so thanks Wargaming YouTube you made my life easier you made my life better and for that, all I can do is try to pay it forward by inviting you guys to paint along with me. As I said, today we're going to be painting alone together, and we're going to be doing some 2D painting. Again, as I said, I'm gearing up. See, see what I did there? I'm gearing up, gearing to play Gaslands, and uh, dropped a little foam in here to keep my cars in place, and even better... The one little box fits in the Riotville box, and I can even stuff all of these templates into that box as well. 
For those of you that are new to the joy of wargaming, I'm going to be doing Gaslands in micro scale. That's right, that bad boy right there is a 6mm car. Look at that. So he's going to be only 20 millimeters by 30 millimeters. And the beauty is Litco knew that oddballs like me existed. And they produced a whole set of turn templates that are actually, they're scaled for micro machines, which are really big compared to what I've got. Micro machines are somewhere around 12 to 15 millimeters in scale, and these guys are only 6 millimeters in scale. So as you can see, if we just line those up directly, it's maybe a little too wide, but it's nothing we can't overcome. Probably the biggest effect is going to be that our templates are a lot larger with respect to the cars than they really need to be, but that's all right. These smaller scale templates are like 10 bucks a piece compared to 25 for the matchbox size ones. How about that? So we're saving money. We got a lot more money to spend on actual miniatures. And I just recently found out about another manufacturer, uh, aside from Irregular Miniatures, who made these Mad Ron cars for us. I got to look into it. They don't have any weapons on it, but they are very sci-fi. And I think any micro scale vehicles could work. At this scale, all you really need is a little bit of wire. And you are off to the races. Off to the races. You see what they did there? Anyway, let me get this stuff out of the way, and uh, we're going to paint some templates. I have decided that I don't want to leave this large template out, because I don't know how many cars are going to be using dropped weapons. So we're going to be painting drop weapon templates. This is just simple cardstock. It's the same kind of cardstock you use in a painting. Here. See that pretty gal? If you look at the poster board, this uh, mat board right here, that is what we're going to be using for today's drop template painting. If you can paint in three dimensions, you can paint in two dimensions. And that's what we're going to be doing. The blue will be our glue templates. I love the idea of glue templates, probably from a lifetime watching Looney Tunes. The black will be our oil slick templates when all is said and done. And the nice thing about using this cardstock is I got two sides to play with. So we'll go ahead and paint some smoke onto the reverse of these, and we'll have way more smoke than we ever think we, we could use. That'll have to be for later today. I think today all we're going to have time for is these. And as you can see, I've got five small templates. Today we're going to do caltrops, and then once everything, once the glue, the paint dries, we'll be able to flip it over, and those are going to be for the mines. And again, once they're done, they'll all fit into one box for my gas lands that fits into Riotville box. And I don't have to fill up another closet for one specific game. What's not to love? So, the way I like to do this is maybe a bit redundant. I mean, they're done. They're black. You can tell that they're royal. But just so that there's no confusion moving forward, I always like to actually let people know, hey, this is, these are oil slicks. And the beauty of this game and the beauty of dropped weapons is that you don't actually have to be all that precise on any of this you can just go ahead and say hey oh yo and it's gonna look oil slicky and then we're gonna put a little couple little wiggly lines around it and just that little bit makes it look so much more glossy we'll give this a nice gloss coat when we're done and to give it that reflective sheen yeah here my my BB love it thank you YouTube Chan you've made my 
You've made my dreams come true. So a little bit of extra shine in there goes a long way. Just kind of make it look like it came out of the back of somebody's tailpipe. I'll, uh, highlight these letters just a little bit more. And we just kind of rush through the oil because the oil is easy. In fact, if you overthink it, it's going to look a little bit too planned. And you don't want it to look too planned. And we'll give it some motion lines here coming out of the back like that. And there is a texture to this paper that's going to help us out as well. Go ahead and get comfortable there so it's coming out of the right place. I'm really regretting getting rid of my pearlescent. For those of you that have been following along for a while, I made the mistake of purchasing a what I thought was a, a tub of of black paint, just like these. And I couldn't figure out why I was getting little metallic flecks in it. And well, it turns out because it was a pearlescent hue, uh, and I was so annoyed with myself that I just threw it away, thinking, when will I ever need any kind of a pearlescent hue? And then probably a week later, I decided to get into Gaslands, which of course means oil slicks. Not all blacks are created equal. Uh, the black texture of this, of this matte board is a little bit different than the black hue, I guess you could call it, of my paintbrush. And... So I'm going to add a little more black and work that around and it's going to add just a little bit more variety and a little bit more, it's going to break this up a little more. One of the things you may want to do is uh, drop down a couple little, just like literal drops in there because it is a dropped weapon. So a couple little dabs, you just dab it on there and that's all you need to do to really drive home the message that you've got a nice oil slick that's nice and sheeny and of course it it adds another layer so you just go right over the the word oil there and then it won't show up quite so bright and quite so clean and we don't want clean not on an oil slick you can even use your finger to to smear it out a little bit more right and that'll break up the the two the, the, the two colors that you got on there so far. And uh, there we go. A couple of dots over there. Maybe slick it up a little more. And look at that. Ain't no question what this drop template is. And we don't have to use our large template. So if one guy is dropping oil left and right... And one guy is using a flamethrower. He doesn't have to ask, "Oh, hey, can I pick up your can I pick up your oil slick so I can see how far my flamethrower shoots?" Um, four may be too many, but you know, they're free and they're fun to paint. So look at that. Oil slicks are already done. What was that? Eight minutes. So I went ahead and gave our Caltrops a quick coat of gray paint. Make it a little more pavementy. That's boring. I'm not going to show you me painting just straight gray. This is where things get to be a little more fun. This is the glue slick. And so what we're going to do is do something very similar. I'm going to go ahead and paint the edges gray. And remember that the other side of this is going to wind up being a smoke screen. Uh, so first I'm going to do the this edge right here. And if I get a little on the top, I'm not going to sweat it because it's just going to look like the pavement coming through. Uh, our slick is going to look something like this as it comes out. And again, I'm not too worried about exactly how clean this looks. Uh, I'm going to try to give it some, some little like drops and maybe make it look a little bit like flames almost uh, everybody will know exactly what this template is when I'm done so just 
a little something like that. Doesn't have to be too clean. As we all know, the whole template is what counts for the purposes of did you run over the glue stick or not. And so if it doesn't look like there's glue everywhere on the template, that's all right. Our caltrops aren't going to be everywhere on the caltrop template. Our mines are not going to be everywhere on the mine template. And our glue is not going to be everywhere on the glue template. The key is just to kind of make it look like it's sprayed out the back. So we'll kind of give it, and if they, each of them looks a little bit different, that's okay too. That's even better because, of course, these are not precision wire guided uh, munitions here. These are fire and forget, make a mess. For the other guy to try to avoid. I think we've all worked with people like that. Looks like I missed the edge a little bit here. Might be where I was holding it. So there you go. And we may want to do the same thing over here for these oil. I'm not sure yet. I may just take a sharpie and go over the edge there. We'll see what happens when we paint the uh, smoke screen on the other side. And kind of making it up as we go along, just like we do in life. See if we can... Go. That one looks, oh, that one almost looks like a hand, doesn't it? It probably won't by the time we're done. Because we still have a lot more. In fact, we'll cut that off so it looks a little bit less like a three finger. There we go. We're going to paint the word glue on it. But I think it already looks fantastic. It already definitely looks different from our oil slick. And while we wait for that to dry, this is what I love about these acrylics, man. Already, our spike strips are ready to go. So I'm going to dust it with a little bit of gray. That may be too much, which is fine, because it just rubs it right off. So here already, you can see what a difference this little bit of gray makes. Just adds a little bit of depth, a little bit of static, a little bit of a little bit of quote realism, I guess you could call it. You know, you can dry brush flat surfaces and it works just fine. We're gonna go in a couple of different directions, so those striations should largely disappear. But striations occur in the real world, so if they don't, we're not gonna sweat it. Not actually working with the real world anyway. Here are we. That would be, uh, you know, particularly on a driving surface. I have to check and see how these colors work on the. Um... Remember, these are going to be dropped on the streets of Townsville, of Riot Central, of the War. Oh man, let me get it back down here where you can see him. Not looking at the screen, I'm, I'm looking at the work that I'm doing. So if I get a little, a little excited and get a little off screen, that's what's going on there. A little too much. There we go. Perfect. A little too just enough. And just like that, you've got a little bit more texture. I wonder what that would look like on my oil. Mm. Mm. I think it's fine. I'll give it just a little bit, just a little, just just a little dusting, just just in case. See that? Just back and forth, back and forth. Not much, just a bit. And there we go.
Okay, I changed my mind. Instead of doing the spikes, because I tell you what I'm going to do on the spikes. I'm going to get a, I don't have it handy right now. I'm going to get a fine tip sharpie and I'm going to draw little stars on there. And those stars are going to signify the actual spikes. Instead of doing that, I'm going to grab, which brush do I want? Probably that same one. We're going to do mines first. I'm bringing this a little closer so you can kind of see. And to do mines, we're going to do it very basic, very simple. We're going to start with a nice dark green. And we're just going to paint three circles. Yeah, let's make it four. We'll put a fourth one right there to fill it out. And those circles are going to be our mines. And that's all you got to do. We're assuming that these are a little smaller. Maybe this one will put a fifth on there. And anybody who's anybody that's ever played a car combat game is going to know exactly what these darn little circles mean. And we're going to we're going to punch it up a little bit more. Obviously, we're not going to stop with just couple of green circles. I guess, boy, you know, I think these circles might be a little on the large size for my six millimeter boys. But that's okay. Remember, war game terrain is impressionistic. You're just trying to create the impression of landmines that you wouldn't want to drive over. And you can see that I've tried to make the drops as random as possible. I'm going to go ahead and put a fifth mine on each one. So, each one of my dudes, each one of my firings gives us five landmines. I suppose I could write mines on each one of these, but I also suppose that isn't necessary. So, you know what, we're going to let those dry for a little bit longer. And while our landmines dry, we'll kick it back over to our glue. And just as we did with the oil, we're going to put a nice sloppy painting of the word glue. Of the word glue. Okay, um, I don't know if you can see that, but I can't. Alright, well that didn't work. So, it looks like my preferred blue is the exact same shade of blue as the blue on the card stock. So, no problem. While we wait for that to dry, we're going to go over to this other one. We're going to say, let's just go a little darker then. And again, I, I think... Generally speaking, G-L-U-E. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger as they go. Glue. I think generally speaking, I guess we'll start with the dark. That's not very dark, is it? That's, that's going to need some... That's going to need a little bit of TLC. We're going to have to go somewhere else with that. G-L-U-E. Yeah, I like that. I like making the, the letter E jump out a little bit more. We're going to put a little bit of blue spatters around here to punch it up. So now we're going to go over our G, L, U, E. And we need some, some blue out here on these as well. Kind of out, think, think about outlining in the darker blue and again we're going to spatter pretty good with the lighter blue once that dries but already yeah look at that see already it's obvious far more obvious than it was what those blue templates are and again while that dries we're going to kick back over to the landmines
So I just chose a brighter green. And for each of these mines, I'm just going to put a nice little highlight on them in that brighter green to make them jump out a little more. And it doesn't take much, just a little around the edge. There you go, a little bit of, a little, let's see if we can zoom in on that a little more. A little bit of highlight there just to give it a little extra oomph. And we're cooking with gas. I think we're going to do one more darker to give it a little bit more shadow. Fortunately, our dark gray is still hanging out here. So now in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to go opposite the bright green. And we're just going to put a little darkness right there. See that? Just a little bit of gleam on the edge. I don't like it. I don't like it. Only there was something else that I could do. And of course there is. We'll circle back around to that one. I'm going to try going with a straight black. And dropping a straight up shadow in here. Opposite that highlighted green. And I think, yeah, I think that's really going to help these jump off the page. There you go. Just that little bit. And then there's one other aspect of these we can do. We're going to add to this that's really going to seal the deal. Oh, here they go. I, You know, when I was a kid, I was told that the roosters wake up with the sun. Nobody ever told me that the roosters go off at 10 o'clock, just just because. But you can hear them yammering away out there. Marking their territory. And this is that peaceful country life that I bought into. It's a different kind of peaceful. There you go. See that? See the distance? It looks like a little bit of shadow on the side of that landmine. Now, one of the ways that you can do this also is just put a, a different green dot in the middle. Almost like a an explosive donut. That'll work, but I, I kind of like the shadow a little bit better. And then there's one last aspect that's really going to sell the idea of a high-tech don't tread on me because if you do it'll be classified as a certain kind of finding out we're just going to put a little red dot right probably going to look a little better if i put it off center for some kind of a proximity fuse <laughs> you know these these look like olives to me now. I thought for sure this red would look like a, a nice light, but it looks like a an olive. So, I don't know. Is this an Italian oil slick? You guys ready for your martinis? The guys chucking Molotov cocktails are going to stop off to get a little garnish for there. So, what do we do? How are we going to make it not look like a pimento olive, huh? You know what I'm talking about there? Looks pretty good. Oh, that little bit of red, and I'm making it a random location. Well, yes, there is something we can do. We can try to put another dot down. In fact, maybe we'll put three. Make it one, two, three, one, two, three. Yeah, I think that looks great. I think it looks a lot less like an olive now and a lot more like some kind of device. And I guess it's got three proximity triggers winking away, letting you know that these are danger pads. Yeah, let's 
I can show you the difference. See, one of those looks like olives, and one of it looks like, I don't know, that red may look more like face than anything else, but we have committed, so we're going to go for it. Bump, bump, bump. And just two more. And this is it. Once we're done with these little dots, the landmines are done. We can flip over and do the same thing. Like I said, I'm going to draw in little stars, maybe little four pointed stars to represent the caltrops and call it a night. But we also need to do some smoke screens. So, those are good. I like it. Maybe not the greatest, but conveys the message. And it cost me exactly zero dollars because it's all made up of stuff that I had laying around anyway. So, what do you think? Back, back to the blue glue. We've been going at this for almost half an hour. I think that's a good stopping point. I will post the next episode, the second half of this painting session, tomorrow, so you don't have to wait so much. You can see what the final work looks like in the title card for this video, and otherwise, if you want to see how we achieved that result, tune in tomorrow for the thrilling conclusion of Painting Alone Together. In the meantime, this is the rule book for Gaslands. I wanted to show you. There it is in blue and white gas lands. All of this micro scale stuff that I've been planning is in keeping with the rules as written. Check it out. To play gas lands with micro scale vehicles, it me. Templates at 70% original size and use a 3x3 three three table. Oh, did I say rules as written? We're going to be using about a 30 inch by 30 inch table. Shh, don't tell the war game cops. There's no such thing as War Game Cops. We're going to do our table the way we like it. That's all I have for you today, but I'll have more tomorrow, so check it out. And uh, when I lay me down to sleep and pray my bedtime prayers, you know that I'll be praying the Lord for you to keep. I am praying for you.